Booty MCs cannot hang with the slang that I bang in your mind. Press stop. You need to rewind to understand the plan. It's hitting low up the sleeve. You're weak like asthma as you fall into your knees. Begging, please. Find it in your heart to spare. It's destruction and devastation. Those feelings don't care. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for show number seven, To Be or Not To Be. But before I begin, a birthday passed since my last show, and I wanted to acknowledge it because it's someone very special to me. Happy birthday, Heather Jackson. Hi, Maya. Now, on today's show, I'll be discussing a hot topic. Fate or free will? What is it? Where do I fall? Can anything be done about it? And we have the fan favorite, the Zodiac sign. In the last episode, This Little Light of Mine, I talked about finding your inner warrior through Mars. Towards the end, I ran through a few key words that went with the elements and the signs. I had a few people reach out asking me to dive a little bit deeper into the signs. They also mentioned, this is an astrology show, and I've done six shows, and I have not talked about each sign individually. When I write a blog, which has now turned into these podcast shows, I'm actually presenting what I've been thinking about or fascinates me. I started doing this to get rid of some of my surplus of air that I possess. But it is a show, and sometimes you have to give the people what they want, right? The people want signs? But what has Paul been thinking about this week? Great question. Can you weave your thoughts into what the people want? Actually, I can Because what I've been thinking about actually goes hand in hand with the signs. But you have to stay with me to get there. Before I dive into signs, depending on the astrology you follow, they say things are fated to happen. They also say within this house and sign next to that, squaring that, this means this could happen. To the novices to astrology, I know you're thinking, what the hell is he talking about? I really understand because if you're listening to two astrologers talk to each other, it could sound like a quarterback calling a football player in the huddle. Flank or left, halfback, split Z, wide trap, comeback. Huh? Astrology is truly a language unto itself. Like any other field, there are debates between factions inside the group. Honestly, that's just typical group dynamics. We all got this common umbrella, but under that umbrella, there are different schools of thought. One of the biggest debates in astrology, other than house division, is the question of fate over free will. Are things in our birth chart fated, or do we have the ability to change the outcome? I listened to two people go back and forth presenting their cases, which they both have compelling arguments. Is the birth chart set in stone the moment you are born? In religious circles, they say the day you're born, God knows the day you're passing. That can't be changed. If you go with that thought, it doesn't matter what I do in risky behavior or whatnot because I'm going to die on that day. So God knew Kobe was going to die in that helicopter a few days ago. There was nothing he could do about it. It was written in stone the day he was born. The other side of that thought is free will. Can we actually change our fate? Kobe. Could Kobe have done anything differently that could have changed what happened? Some say yes. I don't know the full story, but what I did hear was they had grounded a bunch of helicopters. Someone had to override that and say, we going. Being who he was, it probably was him. I know I'm being a little extreme with this presentation, representation, and it may not even be a good example of fate or free will, but you can see where I'm getting at. To think about it as everything is faded feels kind of depressing. If you're in a bad situation, it may be hard to accept that you was fated for this effed up situation. What did I do to deserve this fate? I must have done some messed up shit. Free will, on the other hand, seems a little bit more optimistic, more positive, at least to me. Free will, 
What does that actually mean? In one word, it means choice. You have the ability to choose this or that. Don't quote me on this, but I think more Eastern astrology leans more toward faded side and Western leans more to a little free will. Even when you say the words out loud, do it now. Do it now, root me. Faded. Free will. The energy of free will feels better, doesn't it? I have free will to decide the outcome of this situation. Are you wondering, where do I fall in this frame of thinking? Well, I am a Gemini rising, and in true Gemini form, the twins, I think both of them are right, but with a caveat. No, I'm not riding the fence either. I can explain, and this is where the signs actually come into play. How are they both right? In Black Wolf, White Wolf, the podcast, I talked about how everything has an opposite or a yin and yang. Fate, free will, is just another example of the yin-yang component. So are things in your birth chart fated the day we were born? My answer to that would be yes. But if you start making conscious decisions, which is the real meaning of free will, you can alter the outcome of something that may look faded at one time. My definition of conscious decision may be a little bit different than others. The reason I end everything with know thyself and balance your energy because that is the key to you making conscious decisions. Without knowing yourself, you are living that faded chart. Now, Doing Rideshare has allowed me access to thousands of people over a two-year span, somewhere over 10,000 people, but who's counting? I have done over 8,000 rides to this date. Some rides have had multiple people. So, I'm just giving you ballpark figures. Anyway, after doing these rides, having these experiences, I have had to come to this conclusion. People are actually sleepwalking. Why do I say that? I have done a bunch of impromptu readings for people from all over the world, different faiths, different nationalities. It seems that astrology always fits. After doing so many of these, it has made me wrestle with the fate and free will question for a while. I think I've come to a conclusion that it works because they are letting the energy control them. If someone was conscious of the energy expression, they could then make true conscious decisions. If you start controlling Aries' expression instead of Aries controlling you, I think turns a faded chart to a more free will based expression of that chart. If that is the case, did you not change the fate? I told you guys you had to stay with me. What does that have to do with what the people wanted? This is where the signs come in. But before I begin with that, I've been wanting to say this for a while, but I haven't found a way to weave it into the previous stuff, and now it seems fitting. I have had people ask me, what's a good sign for me? A question I'm really uncomfortable with answering, but I have taken a few stabs in the dark. I do my thing, come up with a sign. Their response, don't say that to me. That's my ex. I hate that sign. They are blah, 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 blah. Look, people evolve and grow at different paces. The sign that you had that relationship may not have evolved into the type of sign expression that is balanced yet. But you cast off a whole sign because of that one person. You really don't want to do that. Because, in fact, you have every sign in you. All 12. It's just placed in different places. 
Ethan Chimenti over at MasteringOfTheZodiac.com and on YouTube as well has a few lists he has produced that I like. I hope he doesn't mind me using his list for the signs. It's free. You guys can go and download it. It's the same list. Also watch his videos, which is pretty good, and use his services. So let's begin with the signs. As I'm reading these signs, if you know your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any of your other planets, keep that in mind as I read these signs. Aries. Growing self-awareness and confidence through asserting your will into the world. An overemphasized Aries comes across as self-serving, aggressive, impatient, combative, Overbearing, rash, reckless. Underemphasized Aries comes across as passive, passive aggressive, fearful, victimized, apprehensive, and self denying. But a balanced Aries expression comes across as self aware, assertive, initiating, direct, active, daring, and independent. Taurus is cultivating self reliance and the enjoyment of values through working with the natural world. But a overemphasized Taurus, when I say overemphasized, it means like too much expression of Taurus, comes across as materialistic, possessive, stubborn, self-indulgent, lazy, greedy, spendthrift. Underemphasized Taurus comes across as Eccentric, abstinent, austere, miserly, stingy, stark, wasteful, and anti-material. But a balanced expression of Taurus comes across as self-reliant, resourceful, grateful, sensual, luxurious, affluent, supportive, and frugal. Gemini, you're learning about the rational aspects of life through communicating with and learning from others. Overemphasized Gemini comes across as nosy, impatient, nervous, flighty, high-strung, fickle, overthinking, or speaking. Underemphasized comes across as deceptive, dishonest, antisocial, disinterested, indifferent, vague, withdrawn. But balanced expression of Gemini comes across as inquisitive, curious, sociable, communicative, communicative, practical, flexible, and lighthearted. Cancer. You're embracing your feelings and sentiments through caring for and nurturing others. Overemphasized cancer comes across as broadening, hypersensitive, overly concerned, smothering, stuck in the past. Underemphasized comes across as withdrawn, defensive, disconnected, cold, detached, uncaring, reclusive. But balanced expression of cancer comes across as receptive, accepting, nurturing, caring, gentle, protective, and reflective. I know, Leo, you've been waiting for us to get to you. Here's your time to shine. Leo, you're expressing yourself through creative playfulness and sharing who you are with others. Overemphasized Leo comes across as self-centered, arrogant, melodramatic, demanding, boastful, attention-seeking. Underemphasized uh, Leo comes across as frigid, apprehensive, self-rejecting, withholding, lackadaisical, despondent, and drab. But balanced expression of Leo comes across as self-expressive, creative, playful, self-assured, loving, generous, giving, and passionate. Virgo, don't overthink this. You're developing your skills and abilities through improving yourself, your environment, and helping others improve. Overemphasized comes across as perfectionist, controlling, nitpicky, obsessive-compulsive, and a workaholic. Underemphasized 
comes across as deteriorating, stagnating, disorganized, careless, depreciating, disdaining. Balanced expression of Virgo is bettering, improving, organizing, enhancing, growing, assisting, helping. Libra. You're keeping balance and mutuality through conscious actions and relationships. Overemphasized Leo, um, Libra is overly agreeable, dependable, dependent, giving power away, selfless, and self-depreciating. Underemphasized Libra is indecisive, passive, unconcerned, immoral, morally gray, unevolved, involved, and straddling. Balance comes across as conscientious, moral, cooperative, fair, just, agreeable, and and practical, and harmonious. No, impartial, sorry. Scorpio, you're exposing the truth through deep involvements and penetrating the depths of life. Overemphasized Scorpio is overexposing, grim, gloomy, cruel, vindictive, hurtful, lustful, grotesque, disregarding. Underemphasized Scorpio is secretive, suspicious, possessive, mistrusting, spiteful, power seeking, overly attached. Balanced Scorpio is transparent, honest, vulnerable, penetrating, accepting, bonding, open, non-attached. Sagittarius. You're exploring life and life's purpose through expanding your mind, body, and spirit. Overemphasized Sagittarius comes across as self-righteous, preachy, dogmatic, condescending, excessive, and practical. Underemphasized Sagittarius comes across as closed-minded, adrift, aimless, restraining, pessimistic, doubtful, inhibited. But balanced Sagittarius is adventurous, philosophical, open-minded, optimistic, freedom-loving, and purposeful. Capricorn, you're building a legacy through discipline, patience, and perseverance. Overemphasized Capricorn is harsh, rigid, overcautious, restricted, inhibited, cold, detached, obsessed with success. Underemphasized Capricorn is impatient, faint hearted, uncommitted, defeatist, negligent, immature, irresponsible. A balanced Capricorn comes across as responsible, committed. Hardworking, mature, determined, dedicated, persistent. Aquarius, you're changing the world through innovative ideas inducing social change. Overemphasized Aquarius is rebellious, radical, dictating, fanatical, extreme, chaotic, outlandish, defiant. Underemphasized Aquarius is undisciplined, impractical, detached, impersonal, aloof, disorganized, antisocial. A balanced Aquarius comes across as progressive, inventive, humanitarian, unconventional, eccentric, envisioning. Pisces is seeking and finding peace through connecting with the ebb and flow of life. Overemphasized Pisces comes across as unconscious, ungrounded, delusional, escapist, living in a fantasy, mindless. Underemphasized Pisces comes across as lack of faith, hopeless, apathetic, callous, overthinking, stressed. And balanced Pisces comes across as intuitive, present, tranquil, trusting, mindful, empathic, compassionate, and connected. Now that we went over all the signs, you really need to be honest with yourself 
and see how's that energy being expressed through your sun, through your moon, through your rising, and all the other placements that you have. If you like that expression, then so be it. But if you don't, you have the free will to change it. The question is, do you want to? Do you want to leave things up to fate? Or do you want to have a say on how fate plays out? The great thing is you do have a choice, but no choice is right or wrong. I want to thank everyone for joining me for To Be or Not To Be. Thanks, Ethan Chimenti at Master in the Zodiac for making that wonderful list on the signs. Remember, you can always go to IamAstrologyReadings.com for a reading. I have a few different types. I even do a sun, moon, and rising reading. Also, I have custom t-shirts. One of my signature shirts is my Zodiac clock set to your sun, moon, and rising. It looks very nice, and it's a conversation starter. People want to know the meaning. I also do other type of astrology and metaphysics type shirts, like I said, custom t-shirts. And if you have an idea, maybe I could work on that as well. Lastly, uh, thank you for listening. Also, I would ask a favor. If you could like my show and share and even give me a couple of stars. As always, know thyself and balance your energy. Your head is big, get dig, get big gum bumper like rock. Your whole style belongs in the dumpster. Who DMCs cannot hang with the slang that I bang in your mind? Press stop. You need to rewind to understand the plan. It's hitting low up the sleeve. You're weak like asthma as you fall into your knees begging, please. Find it in your heart to spare. It's destruction and devastation. Those feelings don't care. Before you step, you need to weigh your pros and cons. Don't ever step to CE, cause we dropping like nuclear bombs. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Beam me up, Scotty. I control your limp body. I'm on the beat like Rob, man. Your heads are bobbing, your heart's throbbing. You still can't catch your time, and you dig. I'm stepping all up in your chest until you booty MCs. We just laid you to rest. Now, how many MCs can resist when all of CE becoming tight like this? We coming through your area, straight dropping bombs, cause we beat CE and we heavily armed. Now, how many MCs can resist when all of CE becoming tight like this? We coming through your area, straight dropping bombs, cause we beat CE and we heavily armed. Now, how many MCs can resist when all of CE becoming tight like this? We coming through your area, straight dropping bombs, cause